praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, can the children please um, go to their classrooms for their Sunday school? Praise God. Shall we arise on our feet even as we worship God this morning? Good morning, church. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to service. Shall we all rise on our feet even as we worship God? Shall we all rise on our feet as we worship? Just begin to worship God. I would like you to focus your mind on Jesus Christ. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, looking unto him, the author and finisher of our faith. And um, I would just like you to just focus. I don't know the image you have of Jesus in your mind. I know we all have an image of Jesus Christ, like that picture that whenever you, you think of, you remember Jesus. I just need you to focus right now. As though Jesus were standing in front of you, just shut your eyes in worship and just focus. This would help you focus on the Father this morning. Let every distractions be put aside this morning, even as you focus on your Father, on your King, on your Maker, on your Lover this morning. Open up your mouth and begin to speak in other tongues if you can. Father, we worship you this morning. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Begin to pray in other tongues. Rika soto liye gede bo shikala badaya. Rika soto Rico Open up your mouth and be in the spirit mysteries. Uh, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Uh. Lord, we worship you this morning. Abba Father, we give you the glory. We come to give you worship from the depths of our heart this morning, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you, 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 you surround us with your presence this morning. Help us focus on you, oh God. Help us focus on your love for us this morning, oh God. Even as we lift up our voice in worship, as we lift our hearts up in worship to you. Oh, la kasukobo shalagadabadagaya. Oh, we worship Jesus. Your glory, 
to be in his presence today i want you to shout the thunders hallelujah. hallelujah yes it's time for us to praise the lord today are you happy to be in his presence yes hallelujah ha. do you know there's nothing god cannot do nothing um about god is impossible oh yes hallelujah What can you do? What 
what can't you do? Not is it possible? Not an impossible. What can you do? What can't you do? Not an impossible with my God. Hallelujah. You do not like, you do not feel. What is that for you to do? It doesn't exist, no. It can never ever exist, no. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is that for you to do? It doesn't exist, no. It can never ever exist, no. Come on, let's go again. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is that for you to do? It doesn't exist, no. It can never ever exist, oh. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is that for you to do? It doesn't exist, oh. It can never ever exist, oh. According to your knowledge and your will for me, what you said you have done, I just have to align you. You are not a man that changes your mind, oh. Those that know you will trust in you, not in all seas and chariots, by the harm of flesh, no one can prevail. Yeah, no man, no man, no man, no man. Yeah, yeah. My confidence is you. What is that? What is that for you? He can never exist. Oh, you do not lie, you do not fail. What is that for you to do? It doesn't exist, oh, it can never ever exist, oh. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is that for you to do? It doesn't exist, oh, it can never, it can never ever exist, oh. Bring it up. You were the same, just today, today, forever. Nobody is like you. You never change. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody loves me like you. I think that again. You are the same. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody is like you. You never change. Yesterday, today, forever. Nobody loves me like you. I worship. I worship you. I worship. I worship you. I worship. I worship, I worship you. You are the living one. You are the living one. Hey, come on. Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. You are the living one. You are the living, 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 yeah, yeah. You are the living God. Nobody be like you, nobody be like you. You are the living God. You are the living God. You are the living, 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 living God. You are the living God. Living, 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 living God, yeah, yeah. You are the living God. You are the living, you are the living God, oh, oh, oh. You are the living God. You are the living. You are the living God. God. Hey, hey. You are oh, the living listen. God. This is my story. This is my son. I will present my Savior without the long. I never worry. I never fret. Hey. Because he, he never fails me. Yeah. Listen again. Oh, this is my story. This is my song. I will present my savior or that the long oh. I never worry, I never fret. Oh, because he 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 never fails me yet. Hey. Oh, oh he, he never, never fails me yet. He never fails me yet. He never fails. He never fails me yet. 
fills me up. He never fills me up. Oh, oh, oh. He never fills. He never fills. Oh, Mary Mooma. Oh, Mary Mooma. Jesus, oh, Mary Mooma. Oh, Mary Mooma. Oh, Mary Jesus, oh Mary, move my home. Jesus, oh Mary, move my home. Jesus, oh Mary, move my home. Mary, move my home. Jesus, oh Mary, move my home. 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 Listen, Jesus, you are good. You have done it all. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are, you are good. You are good. You have done it all. You are good. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are good. You are good. You have done it all. You are good. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are good. You are good. You have done it all. You are good. You are good. Jesus, Jesus, you are good. 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 You are, you are good. 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 Oh, Mary, move my head. Jesus, oh, Mary, move my head. Jesus, Jesus, oh, Mary, move my head. Listen. Hallelujah. Wonderful is Jesus. Who is wonderful? Is Jesus. Who is wonderful? Is Jesus. Who is wonderful? Is Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is excellent? Is Jesus. Who is wonderful? Is Jesus. Oh, who is powerful? Is Jesus. Who is merciful? Is Jesus. Who is wonderful? Is Jesus. Who is wonderful? Is don't you shout his name? Don't you shout his name? Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Listen, I have a question. Give me the answer. I have a question, eh? Give me the answer. I have a question. Give me the answer. I have a question, eh? Give me the answer. Who is the one that make you better fresh? Jesus. Who is the one that make you fresh and fine? Jesus. Who is the one that make you prepare us? Jesus. Who is the one that make you fresh and fine? Jesus. I have a question, eh? Give me the answer. I have a question, no. Oh. Give me the answer. I have a question, eh? Give me the answer. Question, oh, give me the answer. Some of the one will make you brother fight. 
Jesus. Tell me the one who make you fresh and young. Jesus. Tell me the one who make you prosperous. Jesus. Tell me the one who make you fresh and young. Jesus. Come on, everybody, come and sing. Say now.
continue with that. into reach and they are saved. How many righteous people do we have here this morning? And you believe that when you run when you run to the Lord you are saved. Which means if there is anything bothering you if there is anything troubling your soul if there is any problem you are facing you know for sure that when you come into his presence there is an answer for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this, this, this house is called City of Redemption. So which means it's a city where the redeemed are there. And those who want to be redeemed, they step in there. Isn't it? Do you believe that? Okay. So this morning, I don't know if Peradventure, you have any sickness in your body? Peradventure, you have any trouble? You were talking about mental health the other time. You know, all the while when we were going through it, what was going on in my mind was the fact that, okay, so if this, this, this is the problem, so what's the solution? You know, it's good to teach. But again, how do we solve it? So this morning, I don't know. I don't know. Just like our brother was saying, there are some of these problems that you don't, you don't wear it on your face. They, people don't know that you have them. But you yourself, you know you have them. Some, they say they are disabled because they are doing like this and they give them disabled badges. So they know, you know, it's visible. But some people, they, they have problems, but it's not, it's not written on their face. And again, you as a child of God, you are in Zion. You are in the house of God. And there are provisions to meet your, all your need. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the spirit of what? Power, love, and of a sound mind. So anything that is short of sound mind is not your portion. Then the Bible also talks about the fact that that's in Psalm 121. I mean, 112. 112. Okay, 112. It says that, you know, as a child of God, as a righteous one, 
Bad news should not give you any problem. You know, when you hear bad news, you, it doesn't move you. Because just like our brother was teaching also in the morning, you are moved by what you hear. You know, you are moved by what, what happens to you. You know, all the feelings, your body will be, you know, when you hear something contrary. So let's look at that scripture. 1, 1, 2, verse, uh, I think it's verse 4. Let's check verse 4, verse 3, verse, I mean, verse 4, 5. You know, the righteous is not moved. It's, it's forever stable. It's stabilized. Unto the upright, there arise light in the darkness. What is darkness? Depression. You see? So we're going to handle all these things one by one. Is there anybody that feels depressed in any way, in any form? The Bible says, unto the righteous, there arise a light in darkness. So, this is your time of light. This is your time when the light shines into your life and that darkness has to flee. So, everything that is, that is about depression, anyone that is going through depression, anyone that are, they are you know, they have tailored your life and they said, live on this drug. Continually use this to keep this, this depression down. You have come to city of redemption. Therefore, you receive your deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus because light arise to you and darkness has to flee. Depression has to flee in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to put our hands on our heads and say unto me because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The light of God arise unto me. Therefore darkness flee. Depression depart in the mighty name of Jesus. The light of God shines through in the mighty name of Jesus. The light of God shines through my life. I come out of darkness. I come out of de depression. I come out of, of every form of gloominess that the enemy has placed upon my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then he says he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. The next verse. A good man showed favor and lended. It guide the affairs of his life with discretions. Okay. Now, let's go to the next verse. We, surely, it shall not be moved. Okay. You see, what moved people into depression or into uh, that they become destabilized in their life is that they have had something. Something happened to them. Then they become moved. They are thrown out, uh, out of balance. So, it says, surely, it shall not be moved. I want you to say, I, as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. He says the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. I shall be in the everlasting remembrance of my father. In heaven, in the mighty name of Jesus. I shall not be forgotten. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now next verse. Next verse says. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Ah, no news shall destabilize you. No matter the news they bring. If you will not feel it. You will not be depressed. So he says, he shall not be moved. <laughs> My heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. So let's take it. So, I am the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. I shall not be afraid of evil tidings. In the mighty name of Jesus. My heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. My heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Now the next verse says, my heart is established. I shall not be afraid until I see my desire upon my enemies, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father, we thank you. We thank you because we have sure word to counteract whatever the enemy wants to bring our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, is there anybody that wants to be prayed for any particular thing? Let's do that quickly before we move on into the service. Because we, our, we, our, we have prayed. We say no one will go back home the same way they came. Did you come here with any sickness in your body? You are not going back home with that sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. Do you come here with any trouble in your heart? You, but as the Lord God liveth, you will not go back home with that same problem. You are going, you are going home liberated. You are going home rejoicing because you have met with the Lord, because you have come into his presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Anybody like that you want to be prayed for? Okay.
my hands. Come and quench, come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Red of heaven, red of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it all, and let me go. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your children that are standing here this morning thank you Lord because they have come to you because they trust in your power they trust in your ability to do all things in their lives that's why they came that's why they brought themselves here this morning to your presence and your word says in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forever father thank you because the portion of your children this morning is fullness of joy fullness of joy anything that causes pain anything that causes shame anything that causes sorrows of heart you are cast out in the mighty name of Jesus and your heart your life is replaced by the fullness of joy that belongs to the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus there are prayers that you have been praying the Lord will answer your prayers why? because he wants your joy to be full so anything that cuts short your joy because you have been expecting things to happen in your life you have been praying for some things to happen in your life and they have not come to pass I say in the name of the Lord Jesus the Bible says the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short your expectation of joy shall not be cut short your expectation of productivity shall not be cut short your expectation of increase enlightenment shall not be cut short your expectation of health healthy life healthy living shall not be cut short in the mighty name of jesus your expectation of fruitfulness shall not be cut short in the mighty name of jesus so let your life receive the blessing of the lord in the mighty name of jesus father we give you all the praise we give you all the glory in jesus mighty name we pray amen hallelujah hallelujah let's give a clap of praise unto the lord our god lift it up to him father we bless you father we praise you in jesus name amen amen now in the as part of our attitude of worship we want to give our offering to the Lord you want to give your offering you want to give your tithe you want to give uh, first fruit whatever you want to give unto the Lord and as you give that offering I want you to speak to the Lord you see you are not giving to man you are not giving to a social club. You are not giving to just anything. You are given to who? God Almighty. And God says, each time we come into his presence, we should bring an offering. And that's why you come with an offering. That's why we ask for that offering. Because God says, come before me with your with your present, I mean, with, with your offering. So you have come to give the Lord your offering. You have come to give the Lord, and if you want to pay your tithe, you know, 10% of your honey, God says, when you bring your tithe into his house, he will open the windows of heaven and pour you blessing that you will not have room to take. Now, this is the promise of God. And as you stand upon this promise to give your tithe, the Lord will fulfill his word in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, part of part, the reason why you give is because you trust God. You believe in him. You have, you have faith in him. And part of your test of faith is whether you are able to release what you have in your hands. And if you faithfully release it, then God will bless you. So, as you give, that's the bank details. And those who want to give, probably, probably you don't 
want to give through the bank, you can give it, put your uh, offering into an envelope. So if you want an envelope, let, raise up your hand if you want any envelope so that you can put your offering. But when you put it, put your name on it, put your address on the envelope, and put the amount that you are putting the envelope there on the, on the envelope. Hallelujah. Now let's rise up on our feet. And as you rise up, I want you to send that your offering. Send it on an errand. Speak to it. What do you want? Why do you give the offering? What do you want God to do for you? I want you to speak to that offering. I want you to speak to that. You know, if you are paying tight, I want you to speak as a, as a believer. What is your expectation as you give to the Lord? and some gave cash. Eternal Rock of Ages, we present all this before you. We say, Father, this offering is for you. This gift is for you. Your children says, out of what you have blessed them with, they come to say thank you, Lord. They come to give you an offering from them. So, Father, receive this as a sweet smelling savour and let it rebound back today in blessings beyond their imaginations promotion beyond their imagination healing in diverse manner in the mighty name of Jesus they have spoken to you the reason why they have given this offering this morning eternal rock of ages answer their prayers answer the desires of their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. This is not a bribe, but this is a, a good will, I mean, a free will offering to say thank you for the blessing that they have received from you. Father, we pray that the job that your children are doing, preserve those jobs for them. Lord, some of them may receive income that are not big enough. But Lord God Almighty, when your blessing is upon what we earn, it will go beyond, beyond our imaginations. So Father, we pray, let that which they have, which they receive, 
be blessed by you beyond imaginations that that we go and meet all their needs the bible says my god shall supply all your need according to his riches not according to your salary but according to his riches god is rich god is mighty therefore he will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think we can go and see that. Now, without... Um, oh, okay, maybe quickly. Do we have anybody worshipping with us for, for the first time? Let's just quickly recognize you before we move on. Anybody coming here for the first time? This is your first time. You are blessed. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. You are welcome into the house of the Lord. This is new city of redemption. A place of redemption. A place of deliverance. A place of blessing. So you are welcome into the house of the Lord. You will really be blessed as you have come in the mighty name of Jesus. We can see all over you the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you in the Lord of the Lord. Yes, we love you. Yes, we love you in the Lord of the Lord. We can see all over you. brought you here today to bless you, to increase you, to enlarge you, and that will happen in your life because you have been a part of his, uh, of his move this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So you are, we, we welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. We say as you have come this day, you will not, never go back home the same way you came. You go blessed, full, rejoicing, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You, somebody will see you at the end of the service uh, uh, to take the card and to give you a gift. So don't go back home without receiving your gift. Something good, something to, to you know, as a souvenir that will remind you of the day you came. Hallelujah. Without wasting much time, this is the time to go into the word of God. I want us to bow down our heads as we go into the word of God this morning. We have come to be blessed by God. And the word of God is a blessing. You know, the Bible says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them out of their trouble, out of their distresses. I want you to pray that the word of God that, come, that will come this morning will come for me. The word of God will come for me this morning. And the word of God will heal me, set me free, lift me up in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not be deaf to that which is meant for me. That which is meant for me, I will receive in the mighty name of Jesus. That which is meant for me, I will receive without fail in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? Today I'm so excited. I'm so excited for what God had already done here today. You may not know, but if you are so sensitive in the spirit, you will know that God is already doing something in this place. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. God has already started doing something great in this place. Everything, you know, from the Sunday school to the uh, praise and worship. Then when the pastor came and started talking, you know, it's just like, oh, they looked in my notes and, <laughs> you know, and I said, okay, thank God for that, you know. So when you see that kind of manifestation, you know, we, we give thanks because that means God is synchronizing everything, you know, he's synchronizing our hearts, you know. So we just thank God. I thank God. I'm amazed actually because of certain words that have been spoken and exactly the way I was going to say it, you know. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You see, one of those things that, you know, we are in the technological age, right? You know, everything is technology. They are even going to AI now, you know, artificial intelligence. And you can tell AI to write your whole script. Uh, for everything that you need, you can just go to ChatGPT and tell them to write it for you. And they will write it for you, you know, you know. One, one of those things that changed. What's that? <laughs> one of those things that changed during this technological advancement is the addition of something that has been, it's been here, it's been, it's been in the Bible for a very long time. But, you know, they added storytelling. Storytelling. If you cannot tell your story, if you are, <laughs> you have to be able to tell your story. So, do you know that if you go to the uh, store and you buy something, there's a story that you have just told. Because that story will be reported back to the, to the sender. And they will now compile the story, your movement, how you did it, to the end. And that's why we are here analyzing what you bought and what you bought last week and what you might probably buy. And then that can be following you all around. That's your story. <laughs> you know, there's something called digital footprint. If you, if you go to the, maybe Facebook or anywhere and you say, I like this, you know what? You have just told the story. And it will be added to your multitude of other stories. You know? Somebody can be able to access it and tell your own stories, even from the beginning of your, of your life. And then what your life is to be doing, you know, that's what they call exploration and prediction, you know. So they, can, they call it predictive analysis. They are, they, are, they, are, they are projecting in your future. Hallelujah. So you know what? If we go to the book of... Uh, John, John chapter 1, John chapter 1, John chapter 1, I want you to see one of the stories, the book of John chapter 1, please can you put it there, John chapter 1 verse 1, okay, from verse 1, from verse 1, okay, thank you, now you see this story, I want you to to follow it. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. So in, when I say in the beginning, what does that, that time, what does that make you think about? In the beginning. Yeah, yeah. But what? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That is telling you about time. In the, you know, you are telling somebody in the beginning. That means you are telling that person about the time. Because, you understand? That is time. Then, 
And the word, I mean, what's the word? That is a person, right? Okay. You, that's something that you are, you are trying to talk about, you know. In the beginning was the word. Now, and the word was with God. What does that tell you? It tells you where that word was, location. You know, so you need the time, the location, you know. And then the word was God. What does that tell you? It tells you about the person, of, the person, the personality of that person. So we are talking about time, location, and you. Where did you, what time did you go to buy that thing? Where did you go to buy it? You understand? And then, who is the person that went to buy it? That is a story. They pinned you down to a particular thing and a particular place and a particular circumstance. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, why am I saying this? I, I just want to tell you that there is nothing new in the world. You know, what we think is very new has existed. There's nothing new to God. There's nothing that is going to happen that God doesn't know about. God has all these things in plan in eternity. You know, is a, you know, we are talking about eternity because God stays, he lives, he resides in eternity. He does not live in time because when he created man, I mean man, he had to create time for us. He didn't, I mean, he wasn't living in time. He was timeless. He had to, you know, the Bible says he created a, a, a light, a big light, and then a small one. The one rules the day, and then the other one rules the night. That is the creation of time. And the Bible says that as long as this, time, this um, heart remains, there will always be seed time and harvest time. That means, do you know what that means? That means, when this world goes, then there will be no more time. Because it says, as long as this earth remains, you know, there will be time. But after this time, I mean, after this heart passes out, you know what? We are now in eternity. Hallelujah. If we should be joyful. We should be joyful. And that takes us to, <laughs> to another um, realm of what I'm about to talk about, you know. Hallelujah. Actually, I observe all the existing protocols. I told my brother that I will be playing some one song I forgot. <laughs> so don't worry. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. You know. There is, a, there is a lot of things in my mind, actually. So, uh, and if time permits, we can still do that. Okay, so we are going to be talking about the dimensions of Zoe, the dimensions of life. We've been talking about Zoe for some time now. But, you know, uh, we want to talk about the dimensions. I want, to tell, I want you to know that there are so many dimensions. And that's why God says our life is in glory. We, we move from one level of glory to the other. The glory, you are, you are in this level today. And if you continue to do the right things, you continue to seek God, you continue to read the word of God, then you move to the next level. Something else happens on that. And God sees you differently at that level. Then, if you still continue to do the right thing, doing what God wants you to do, then you move to another level. Hallelujah. But before we go further, let me quickly talk about... Um, the, let me take us back to the beginning, the, the beginning of man. How did man origin? 
I mean, how do we, how did we originate actually? So if you go to the book of Genesis. of Genesis chapter 2 chapter 2 verse 7 and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living soul see I want you to know that you know uh, I can just say that when iPhone came, they, they gave us maybe iPhone, it started with iPhone 3 or something. iPhone 3 or something. I, no, I know iPhone 3, so it, it should be 3 then. So, but later, iPhone 4 came, right? Then later, iPhone 5 came. 6, 8, now maybe they are in 14 now, right? 14. What level are you now of iPhone? No, no, what level of iPhone 4 are you? iPhone. 40. Give me five. Are you? <laughs> that means you're a perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still on level 8. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just telling you, you know. Some people are still on 7. Some people are on 5. Some people are not even on any level because they are on something else, you know. Samsung, you know, <laughs> so you haven't started the iPhone journey, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, all these things are very relevant. We are going to talk about it, you know. So, you see, when God created man, he created Adam, right? That first man was created in the soulish realm because the Bible says that he breathed into his nostrils and he, the breath of life and he became a living soul. <clears throat> so, the soulish man functions on that level of breath. Breathe into the dust somebody and that person starts walking, right? So, he, 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 then he gets is sustained by the blood. It was created through the bread. And it continues to live like that. You know, as beautiful as that kind of life is, it still is not enough. It's not enough at all. Because what was it made up of? When it was formed, it was formed from, from dust. You know, at that point, there is no spiritual engagement in him. Because the only sp uh, spiritual engagement that was in was the one that God created at first. And that was the inward man. And you cannot even, you have an inward person. You have an inward man, but nobody can see it. You know? But it's, it's the main you. It's you. That's you. But nobody can see it. When they want to talk to you, they, then they figure out how you look. Uh, I mean, your, your height, your complexion, that's what they see. But they don't see the real you. That is the, 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 the inward man, the spirit of God in you. That is, the, that is who you are. But people, don't, people will not describe you as that person. They will describe you as... <laughs> The, that man has a, a white beard. He has uh, then or we are, what you are wearing is wearing a red shirt. You know that's how they would describe you. You know how you look. You know, but do, do you know what? This is a corruptible state because it was. It, I mean, every, it, God made things up, and then He made man. Right? This is a corruptible state, and that was why he failed the test. He, he failed the first, the very first test. He failed it. What does the Bible say? If you, if you, uh, 
uh, fall or in the days of adversity. That means your strength is small. That means the strength of this one was small, right? That was why he was able to fail at the very first attempt of the devil. You know? So, that's not good enough, right? You know? It's, it's a basic creation. It's an iPhone 3. <laughs> you know? So, you know, we are saying, even God told Abraham, that walk before me and be perfect and, and be perfect. That means he wasn't perfect before. He, was, he wanted him to be better, you know, to be doing things better. So that's not the life that God wants us to do, wants us to live. It's not enough to live um, by your breath and by your blood. That is actually what is called the Adamic nature. You know, it is, it is the human realm. It is the feeling realm. You know, all these things that we were talking about, um, mental health, anxiety, depression, all the, that is the feeling, that is the realm. You know, there is no, because if you want to overcome all those things, then you have to, there's something that you have to do. And we will discuss it. Okay, let me quickly, because I may forget. You have to be able to, to speak the word of God. You have to be able to look on your inside and bring out the spirit, that spirit that was hidden in you. Bring it up. Let it be, stir it up. And that's when you will be able to overcome that. You can, you know, anxiety. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, most things I wanted to say has been said. But, you know, I'm just uh, following what has been said. That's why I said I'm resting on the on the protocol, on the existing protocol, you know. Hallelujah. So, you know, this kind of person is the kind of person that his neighbor will wake up and frown at him and he will frown back. You know, he doesn't see anything back. His wife will, will um, may frown at at him too, and he will frown back. What kind of life is that? That is the natural state. That's the, that is the one that you need to conquer. You know, do you know that the Bible says that nobody will be able to be your enemy. If your wife fronts at you, and you say, ah, what's that? And you run at, I mean, towards her and say, Madam, what are you doing? What's going there? You just give her a peck and say, and you roll out twice, twice, <laughs> and you do this. <laughs> what will she do? Will she say this man? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Or if your if your neighbor is frowning at you. You wake up in the morning and somebody is frowning at you. And you say, good morning. I say, what's good in the morning? <laughs> then you say, God made this day good. So why are you not happy? I am happy. Is God not good? God is good. You will say, this guy is crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> somebody told me that before anyway. I was at work. I, actually, I have so many people, very grumpy people. I used to work with some people that are so difficult. Even my my boss, the one I was, <laughs> there was a day I went I went to him in the morning. I said, "Good morning." And I said, ah, "What's good about the morning anyway?" And I said, "Don't you don't you think the morning is good? It's made by God, you know. The Lord has made this thing, and He is it's good." There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> you see. And some, some people will be wondering, why are you so happy? Why are you like this? Why are you so happy? They think there must be some element of sadness in you. They think you are entitled to be unhappy. No, I'm not entitled to be unhappy. <laughs> I prefer to be happy. You know? But some people now confess and say, okay, 
whatever you are taking, give me a part of it. Give me, give, give me some of it. And I say, okay. It's what, whatever I'm taking is the spirit. Then you say, spirit? I take spirit too. I go. <laughs> you should give me, you should give me part of it. And I, and I now bring it down. It's, it's, this is the spirit. This is the Holy Spirit I'm talking about. It, because it's in you. It's an engine in you that makes you happy. That makes you rejoice, you know. He's a rejoicer. He's rejoicing in you. And he's causing you to rejoice. So if you have that kind of thing in you, then you will be a rejoicer. You will be rejoicing in all the days of your life. You know, all those things that we were talking about today in um, in Psalm 112. Psalm 112, please. He will do it for you. Then the only thing you need to do is to voice it out. You just voice this out. One, one, two, from maybe six. Uh, yeah, you know, that's my <laughs> notes too. That's what I was talking about. You know, surely you shall not, you shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Continue. Go to the next one. Actually, is it not the seven? Go to seven. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Somebody sends a, 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 a message to you that something is happening. You say, it is well. You know, it is well. That it is well without, ah, it is well. Somebody, I mean, somebody is dying over there and you are saying it is well. Is it not because of an assurance that I have in me that God is going to do something? That, that's why I said it is well. And I can say that because I know the God I serve, I know the spirit in, within me, you know. It is well. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, you know, so all those things I, I was just saying, they are the human level because there is no reinforcement of the spirit because Adam had sinned and human beings have, I mean, the, the spirit that God gave so human beings have been made inactive. They've died. Those, those spirit, that spirit died in, in, in Adam. And then every human being that was born came, was born with an inactive spirit. You understand? So it is when you now grow up and you now start hearing the word of God, you know, when you start hearing the word of God, yeah, I mean, singing some music, some songs of praise. That's when that spirit, you don't, that spirit will hear by itself. Because you are, the Bible says, um, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing the word of God. You know, it is not you, but the spirit in you is hearing that, that those word of God. And then it's rejoicing. Then it, it becomes active. That's what makes you to be born again. Hallelujah. And now, when you are born again, that's another level. You know, some people never go beyond the, the human level. But the, what makes you go to the next level is the word of God. You cannot go. You see, one of those things I want you to know is that it is only in, in Christianity that something happens that changes the human, human being. You understand what I'm saying? The element of God is given to you. The impartation of God is given to you in a level that changes your humanity and get, takes you to the next level. Some people never get to that next level because they never um, experienced the word of God. They never experienced uh, the hearing the word of God then the spirit, the spirit that was created in them never woke up. You know, it never woke up at all. So it, it was never quickened, thank you. It was never quickened. You need to be, the, your, your, your spirit needs to be quickened. <laughs> Hallelujah. That takes me to another, another part of this, uh, entirely. You see, only two people in the whole wide world that ever existed in this world had been given the, 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 
the mandate to do something and it will reflect on all humanity. Those persons, they are not, uh, those people are not um, the, pres the president of a country, they are not anything. But those two people, is one, one of them is Adam. Then the second one is Jesus. I say is because he's still living. He's still present till today. So, you know, let me now go to that, actually. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, I just talked about being born again. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So Zoe, like I told you, has many dimensions. But we are going to just talk about two, two, two dimensions. If we go to the book of Second, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, I want you to understand this part really good. Because if you don't understand it, you may not actually know what I'm talking about. It says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the, glo the glory of God, the, the glory of the Lord, are chained the same image from glory to glory. Even as the spirit of the Lord. So what I want you to, to, to hold in that, in that place is that you can change from glory to glory. The very first change that you can make is to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. You know, in, in that, that's a miracle actually. And that's the greatest miracle that can ever happen to any human being. Any human being. And any, because that's the, that's the, that means you are born again. That means that spirit in you is now alive. You know, and when the spirit in you is alive, that's when you can communicate directly with God. And that's when you will, you will cry to God and God will answer you. You will cry to God and he knows who is talking. Because your spirit has an ID. He knows your name through that spirit. If you don't have that spirit, it may, it mean, you, you will not even have the connection. That's, that's the point. But if that spirit is active in you, then that's when you can call upon him and you, will, and you know that he will answer you because he knows your name. Hallelujah. So, that is the spirit, that is the time the way you can say that you have the life of God in you. The life of God, you have it in you at that point. Hallelujah. You see, yeah, the Bible says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And there's another place where he says that the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And who are those sons of God? Those sons of God are the ones that have been led by the Spirit. Those ones that their, their spirit have started, have woken up. You know, those are the, those are the people that, that the Bible is calling the manifestation of the sons of God. The mani so, God is, is, is waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God, of the Son of God in you, in me. You know, and the point is that when we, when we get to the first level, we have the ability to go to the next level. We have the ability to even go to the other level because there are about many, many levels, about seven levels. And when you, when you get to the first level, 
the Bible says there is party in heaven. Angels are singing, welcoming, welcoming that your spirit that it has woken up. That's why they are rejoicing. Not because um, of anything, but because there is a spirit that has woken up. As now is now inact is, I mean it was inactive before, but now it's active. Hallelujah. That's why the spirit and the, the, the angels are singing. Then imagine what will happen when you leave this the first realm and you go to the second realm. Another singing, another rejoicing. Because you have now graduated to another level, and on and on and on like that. I know that God will take us whatever level you are today. God will take you to the next level in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It's, it's, it's searching all the inward parts of the belly. He knows, he knows your thoughts. He knows everything. You know, and he knows that your thought because of the of the spirit in you, and that's what he said is the candle of the Lord. He searches or everything, just like I was saying. He, you know, he can tell your story. He can tell your story from the beginning of your life to the to the end, because it's a it's a candle that is is an is, is a storyteller. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. So, where did it start? In him. In him. And what is this life? This life translates to eternal life. Eternal life. Zoe. Zoe. It's, that's what that life is. And then... The Bible now says that this life is in Christ. You know? Then it now says, in him was this life. And the life was the light. What's the meaning of light? What does life do? What does light do? You know, that means that the life in Christ is translated into light in man. So, what does, what's the function I mean, what's the significance of that light in you? Hallelujah. 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 That is, that is the development of you. Light is development. Light is wisdom. Light is understanding. You know, all the... the uh, Light is advancement. If there is no, is, is there is, if there is no impartation of the Holy Spirit in this world, there wouldn't be any de development. You may say, oh, why? Some people are doing something. I mean, China is doing this, all this. No, it's because of the, of the Spirit of God that is being activated. You know, um, a lot of things are happening. Uh, you know, look at the U United States of, of America. You will think that those people don't know God. But they know God. They, that was where it started. Any development will start from the, from, from the spirit. That is the, that is the place that God talks to. He doesn't talk to any other place. He doesn't talk, uh, talk to your hand or your leg or anything. He talks to your spirit. He gives the wisdom to your spirit. Then the spirit will translate it to the, to the brain. You know, I know this and I know it well because there was a time I was given a project to do. And that project, I... I was, I was just looking at it. I didn't know where to start. Because I went to all the libraries. I went to a lot of places. I couldn't find an example. And I was wondering, what will I do? How will I uh, at, uh, take, I mean, tackle this problem? I, I, 
I searched all the all Google, everything. Nothing. So, well, and I, I just had to do it. I had to do it because it was something given to me. And I, I told my boss, and they said, we just have to find a way. And what way? Nothing. <laughs> so, I just, I, the only thing I could do was to pray. So I was praying, I was praying, and I got into, a, in, into emotion, you know. Um, I was praying in tongues, I was praying in tongues, I was praying in tongues, and all of a sudden, I just said, oh, oh, let me, let me try this. I ran to my, to my, uh, to my co- computer and I did something, and I, I just said, enter, I tell you, that was the project. That was the project. That, I'm telling you the truth. The code I had to write wasn't more than two lines. And I said, why didn't I think about it? I, I, no, I can't say that because I knew where that came from. I knew where it came from. It's not from man. It's not from, from my blood or, or from my breath or from anything. It was from the Spirit of God. You know, so please, anytime you we are faced with a, any problem, even it happened today, <laughs> we, we, we traveled and my wife lost something yesterday and said, oh, I took, I took it there and it was, she was looking for it. And I said, ah, okay. And she was so worried about it. And I said, okay, why don't you tell your principal, the, the, the person that always tells you something, because so many things like that have happened before, and she's funny. So why are you worried now? Why don't you ask from the person that, you, that helps you? So she now went to somewhere solitary, and she kept quiet. She may be praising the, the Lord or something. And all of a sudden, she said, please help me take that. <laughs> Uh, burgundy bag, and I went to bring it to her, and she was fumbling with it, and she said, yes, I found it! Ha! I said, pro glory be to God! <laughs> that was just yesterday, you know? I tell you, it happens every time, it happens everywhere. You need something, you, you, are, you, you are faced with a challenge, and you don't know what to do. And you can't even, I mean, fathom what you can do. You know, there's somebody that is a limit breaker. That is the Holy Spirit. He's the limit breaker. He will help you. You know, because he sees everything. He knows everything. You know, I'm telling you, this is not the first time that happened in my life. You know, because God imparts to you an element of himself. An element of eternal life. You know, it will, it, will, it will bring you through. It will, it will make you to sail through in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, when we continue to, to, to talk about instances of this kind of thing, you'll be surprised what will be coming out. Hallelujah. So, that was the, that's the first level. Then there's another the second level. Oh, I forgot to say something. That first level works by grace. It depends on grace. Because, you see, it's still false. I mean, and then, by the way, today the pastor was asking, how many of us, how many of you are righteous? And I saw some people didn't raise up their hands. Is it because you are thinking that, oh, I'm not righteous? Is it because you think I'm not righteous? That's, what I'm, that's why I'm not going to raise up my, 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 my hand. As long as you believe in Jesus Christ, you, believe, you profess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are a righteous man. So I'm just trying to help you in case of next time. You are asked that, are you righteous? Be bold to say, I am righteous. Because that righteousness you are talking about is not the righteousness of your own. It doesn't depend on if you do something or not do something. But it depends on the righteousness that Jesus Christ gained for, for you on the cross of Calvary. So you have to, 
if you are saying you are, if you are saying, if you are not sure, that means you are not sure of what he did on the cross of Calvary. So I don't, I wonder why you are here then. Hallelujah. Yes. Now you are you are then here in order to receive it. Yeah, that's okay. You can receive, and it's so it's so easy to receive because he says that I want you to carry I want you to carry my body. The world will tell you they want you to carry their burden but the burden is heavy but the burden of Christ is so easy it's, it's not saying that you should go and cut yourself because there are some people if, you want, if they want to get initiated they, will, they are required to go and kill somebody go and kill somebody and bring his head first then they will initiate you to the to, to, the, to the kind of thing they are doing but Jesus Christ said the only thing you need to do is to confess in the open, confess the Lord Savior that He is your Lord and He is your Savior. You know, the point is that the more you do this thing, you, you know, the more you do this thing, the better for you. The more your spirit, the channels of your spirit gets open. Channels of my spirit open up. Hallelujah. I am in the spirit. Open up, hallelujah. You know, open up by the challenge of my spirit. Hallelujah, you know. I don't can can somebody sing that song? Hallelujah. Deep call unto yes. Deep call upon the deep. Uh, unto deep, rather. Channels of my spirit. Open up. Open up the channels of my spirit. Let Jesus enter. Open up. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. No boundaries, no limits. No boundaries. Open up. Amen, amen. Open up, open up, open up. Let the call unto the open Let the deep call unto the deep. Hallelujah. That's okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So, in order for you, to get to the to the, to this next level, your channels of this, your the channels of your spirit has to open up. That's when that's one I was talking about. That's the time when it starts listening to the word of God, and the word of God is now making you active. You will not know, you will not know, but but you will feel something that God is doing something inside of you. That's why you are receptive. Otherwise, you will not be receptive. Somebody, actually, when I, before I got born again, uh, in, when I was in school, so many times, some people will come to me, they will even give me uh, food to eat, you know, when we were in school, you know, and they will preach the gospel. I will say yes, but immediately they go, I'm going something, I'm going to do something else. You know, it's true. So many times, not once, so many times, but I would take that thing they brought, maybe sweet or anything, you know. And then, immediately they go, I would just do whatever I want. And it doesn't matter, I mean, I didn't feel any, but there was a time when I couldn't even escape it anymore. There, the fullness of time came. And it was like I was driven. When I saw something that is that I couldn't, I, I couldn't even explain it. it. I couldn't even do anything but do what God wanted me to do and submit my life to Christ. You know, so God has all these ways, all these manifestation in the spirit. So I was saying that the second part. The first part depends on the on grace. You know, the first part de depends on grace. People give you, I mean, God gives you the grace. Just like the children of Israel when they were coming from Egypt. God gave them uh, manna. But at some point, that manna ceased. Do you know what I'm talking about? When you start growing, you will, not, you will no more live by grace anymore. 
But the Bible says, Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> you, you will now start living by the law of the spirit of life in Christ. You have graduated a little bit. And when you are, you are now operating in, in that realm, there is more responsibility for you. You are not even the, we had uh, that Gio say that uh, this is not anointing. We are not talking about anointing now. Because it's not anointing. It's operating in another level. It's another level, the level of grace. That grace is given to you as a token. It's not as a gift anymore. Just like Jesus Christ was given the, uh, the, the spirit in a, in a full measure. Hallelujah. So we are, I'm just telling us that we have, all of us, I mean, I'm not sure, all of us may, may still be in the realm of, um, of, I mean, the first level of Zoe now. And we are operating in grace at this time. But, you know, people who operate in, in that kind of law, is, they are different. Though. They are very, very different. You know, God, I mean, when they, 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 they shouldn't be, I mean, there are certain mistakes they shouldn't make. You know, let me quickly tell you something. Moses, let me give you an example of Moses. Moses did something to God. I mean, uh, he offended God some time ago, but God wanted him to finish what I mean, those things he wanted him to do. And then, when God now reminded him that this is what you did, you did not honor me in the presence of the people. And if you go to the, Deuter uh, the book of Deuteronomy, uh, maybe 42 or something, you read about this. And then Moses started praying to God that please, um, I, mean, um, I, will, I mean, it will not happen again. And he was praying to God. And God said, don't pray to me. Stop praying to me. Go to the, uh, to the mountain of Abraham to die. He said, go and die there. I'm not going to kill you, but when you get there, you will die. That was, you know, I'm just trying to tell you that at that level, there may not be any mercy anymore. Because it's a one-to-one it's a -one thing. We, we are experiencing grace now. This is the realm of grace. And we, I, we, we receive, let's enjoy it. It's a very good, great realm. It's a good realm. It's an enjoyable realm. And we should continue to, to pray for the grace to expand. The more we read the word of God, the more grace. Then, there's something that... I want to tell you now. Hmm. You see, if you go to the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Do you know the kind of person that, the level of that person, the level of that person is the level of Zoe. It's in one level of Zoe. I'm not sure, maybe, I don't know the level, but who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the first part was spoken with the, with, the, with the spirit of boldness, right? But when you get to 36, when you get, then it says, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed. You will know that that tone has changed now. The tone has now changed. For thy sake we are killed. Like a sheep counted uh, uh, for slaughter. You know. But then the spirit man just kicked in and said, no. In all these things we are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. You see, I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. But this is somebody, this is, a, this is a conversation. I mean, 
this is a story that somebody is telling. It, it started from a very strong, um, uh, uh, courageous spirit. He's saying something. Now, all of a sudden, the spirit, that spirit just dwindled down and said, oh, we are killed. And he wanted to be depressed. He's going back to his state. Everybody does it. Elijah, we were talking about Elijah today. He did it. You know, yesterday, he was the one killing all the bars of, um, I mean, all the prophets of bars. Today, he was scared of a woman. You know? Yeah, who wanted to kill him or something. And he was running away. You know? So, it happens to humanity. But it is the grace of God that will make you, make us stable. Hallelujah. We need stability. 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 Can we rise up in the praise of God and pray for stability? That God will make us stable. He told, and God told Abraham, that walk before me and be ye perfect. Oh, for that level of perfection, may God give it to us in the name of Jesus. We need stability. Not that we do exploit tomorrow, today, and tomorrow we are sinking in into our misery. Oh, we are, we are not going to be depressed. We are not going to be anxious. We are not going to be, to, to, to be weak. We are going to be strong in the Lord. We are going to be strong in the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to be strong in the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you. And he continues, says, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through, through him that loved us. Who is that person that loved you? Is Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life Hallelujah. No angels, no principalities, no prince, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no heights, no depths, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory be to God in the highest. Let's just stretch our hands to our pastor and just pray for him. But I thank you for your son. Thank you, Lord, for using us to bless our lives this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the word of life, for the word of encouragement. We receive this in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, you that have given, you will not be empty. The Lord will fill you up. The Lord will uphold you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you go from grace to grace. In the mighty name of Jesus, higher and higher. In the mighty name of Jesus, and the word you have preached, it will it will bring blessing to every life. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We go in another two minutes. Uh, I will quickly give you the announcement. We have a. Well, don't bother to play it. Uh, during the week, we, we meet on, on, on Zoom on Monday for prayer. We have a family prayer time from 8 to 9. On Wednesday, we have the children, uh, the, 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 oh, okay, that is workers rally. Uh, for workers, all the workers, and there is going to be uh, a meeting with Jill. It's going to be televised uh, in the center. Uh, we will be informed of the center, you know, maybe between today and tomorrow. And, uh, uh, well, I don't know. All the, if you are a worker and you want to go, let me know. Let Raki know so that we can arrange how to get there. And uh, on Friday, there's going to be Festival of Life in uh, uh, Excel. Again, uh, we are not going to hire a, a, a mini boss this time around because, uh, well, but if you want to go, let us know so that we can, you know, arrange to pick one of, you know, and at least I can go with another four people in my car and uh, Bracken can also go with another four people in his car and as many people are, that we go, we just manage ourselves like that. Amen. Uh, 
Yeah. When uh, so please, I want you to give the uh, uh, not give as many as possible, maybe about three, because we want you to use it to invite somebody. We are going to have a, a, a seminar coming up at the end of the month uh, from uh, 27th to 30th. And who is the minister? Who are the ministers coming? Can you remind us? Can, we have the King Taiwo, used to be part of us there before. And who? Dr. David Oichala Uludoyi. And what time is the service on that Sunday? 1 p.m., not 10 a.m. 10, 1 p.m. in the afternoon. So let's remember. Now take this, invite somebody, let them know that we have the program and they will be blessed in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Any other announcement will be communicated to us uh, by Zoom or by WhatsApp and you know, so I want you to just bless the name of the Lord for what God has done in your life today. Thank you, Father. You know, it's, it's good to thanks, uh, to give thanks to the Lord for what he has done for us so that we can have more, so that we can have more blessings or so that what we have can become permanent in our lives. What God has done in our lives today will become permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for our hearts that have been set free from every oppression, from every uh, 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 pressure that the enemy wants to mount upon our lives. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, because you have brought us into a light, a place of glory, a place of honor, a place of en you know, enlightenment. So we say in the name of the Lord Jesus as we go into this week, we go with the presence of the Lord. We go because we have, we have received stuff from the Lord. And we go prepared, you know, like soldiers that went into the armory to take some, you know, to take some uh, weapons, you know, to fight the battles that is going out to war. So you are going out this week to win. You are not going to lose in the mighty name of Jesus because you are going with the power of, of the Lord. You are going because God has already can conquered for you. So he has given you victory. So you are victorious this week in the mighty name of Jesus. You expand, you increase, you enlarge. Whatsoever you lay your hands upon this week shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus because your Lord God Almighty is with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So we, we de declare the grace together in fellowship, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore in Jesus' name. So I say to you, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.